Good morning, beloveds. Um, well, it's Sunday morning. <laughs> it's August 2nd, and it looks like I need to clean my camera lens again, uh, which I will do after this. Um, I spent a lot of time on the phone yesterday, so uh, it was good. Um, my brother and I don't talk often. But we spent two hours on the phone yesterday, and his reason for calling was a sad one. Um, he lives in Kansas, and his job has said if you come, if you travel at all, if you get on any public transportation, you have to quarantine for 14 days, which means that when he would normally come to see me in November, he can't. Now things may be different in November. But he's, he said he's going to miss, you know, coming down here. And we're going to miss him coming down here. But it was good to talk to him. So, and we talked about the COVID nonsense. And we talked about, you know. I'm glad that I have the relationship with my brother where, like I said, we don't talk often. But when we do, it's good. So, definitely a... <laughs> A vital conversation. It's August is the month of vitality. All right. Um, our title today is I Live Fully Today. It's Sunday. I'm going to nap fully today. <laughs> but that's included in living fully today. So I live fully today. The wisest man who ever lived said there is a truth that can set you free from fear, want, unhappiness, and death itself. He said that this truth is already within you. Suppose you accept this spiritual wisdom, since the one who gave it was able to prove his claims. Don't you think that this great and glorious person was telling you that the kingdom of your good is here today. Now this means that evil, no matter what face it wears, or what form it takes, or how many people believe it, is never a thing in itself. Jesus did not say that evil has no reality as an experience. He said that you should not judge according to appearances. Wait, wait hang on. I skipped a line. Let me go back. Now that, now, now, this means that evil, no matter what face it wears or what form it takes or how many people believe it, it is never a thing in itself. Jesus did not say that evil has no reality as an experience. He did say that you should not judge according to appearances. He said that you are to live as though the kingdom were already yours. No matter what the negation of yesterday may have been, your affirmations of today may, re may rise triumphant over them. Cease weeping over the mistakes of yesterday and steadfastly beholding the face of the great and divine reality. Walk in the... In that light wherein there is no darkness. Say, I know that every negative condition of the past is swept aside. I refuse to see it or to think about it. Yesterday is no longer here. Tomorrow has not yet arrived. Today is God's day. God's day is my day. Today, bright with hope and filled with promise, is mine. I am alive, awake, and aware today. That was interesting. All right, so let's start off with the wisest man who ever lived said that, the, that a truth that can set you free from fear, want, and happiness, and death itself. There is a truth that can set you free free from fear, want, and happiness, and death itself. He said that this truth is already within you. And that's one of the things that I love about Science of Mind, is that's what they say. 
So all of the answers that you need are already within you. You just need to find that still, small, quiet place. No. You just need to be still and find that quiet place. Because it's not a small place within you. It's an infinite place within you. And listen. Because practitioners don't give you answers. What practitioners do is help you ask the right questions. He said that this truth is already within you. Suppose you accept this spiritual wisdom since the one who gave it was able to prove his claims. And that's one of the things about Christianity. One of the reasons why Christianity spread is because when they went out and taught Jesus' message um, about overcoming death, they said, here, we have somebody who, who did it. We, we can prove it. We have proof in the pudding. We have somebody who overcame death. Um, which most of the world's mythologies, you know, there are some. Um, I can't think of, her name starts with an I. She's Babylonian. Ishtar. Ishtar did. Ishtar walked into the mouth of hell and walked back out. We, she was also betrayed by a man, but we won't go there. So, you know, they're, they're out there, but combine Jesus's message of love with his overcoming of death. And that is one of the reasons why Christianity spread the way it did. Don't you think that this great and glorious person was telling you that the kingdom of your good is here today? And that is one of the things that Science of Mind teaches. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is here today. The kingdom of God is around you. Open your eyes and see it. And that's one of the reasons why he's constant. Ernest was constantly talking about consciousness, because so frequently we are we walk through this world unconscious, and we don't see the beauty around us. Now this means that evil, and I love this part, no matter what face it wears or what form it takes, or how many people believe it. And that right there is pretty key. It doesn't matter how many people believe in evil. Is never a thing it's in itself. Evil isn't, it's not a power. It is not a power equal to God. It's not a power at all. Yes. It is an experience because he's, Jesus did not say that evil has no reality and experience. It is an experience, but it is not a power. He did say that you should not judge according to exper appearances because there's always a, a reality in back of the appearances. He said that you are to live as though the kingdom is already yours. Because God does not, is not bound by time. That's why we pray in the present tense. And that's why we want to think about the kingdom of heaven in the present tense. Because the truth is, is, is it, it is around us. Sometimes we are not willing to see it. And sometimes we just having a really hard time seeing it. No matter what the negation of yesterday may have been, your affirmations of today may, may rise triumphant over them. How much power are you putting behind your affirmations? Are you willing to sweep the negations of yesterday away? Or do you want to hold on to them and whine about them for a little longer? I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But ask yourself that question. I say that because I do. Sometimes I hold on to the negations of yesterday just because I want to whine a little longer. And then when I'm ready to let go, I will sweep them aside and hold on to yesterday. And he, then he even says it right there. Cease weeping over the mistakes of yesterday. Quit your whining. I'm not telling you anything I don't already do. Uh, steadfastly beholding the face of the great and divine reality. Walk in the light wherein there is no darkness. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Uh, we went to walk for the sunset. 
And so that meant we walked home in the dark. But we didn't walk home in the dark because there were street lights and there was a glorious moon last night. So walk in the light where there is no darkness. It's never completely dark, ever. Oh, all right. So say, I know that every negative condition of the past is swept aside. I refuse to see it or to think about it. Stop giving it power. Yesterday is no longer here. Tomorrow has not yet arrived. The only time is now. The only time is present. Today is God's day. God's day is my day. God is all there is. Spirit is all there is. Today, bright with hope and filled with promise, is mine. I am alive, awake, and aware today. And that is a power statement. I am alive, awake, and aware today. So if you wake up one day and you are just not with it, there it is. I am alive, awake, and aware today. And today is a good day. Sunday is a good day for me to be awake, alive, and aware. Um, all right. So it is Sunday. That means that I need to go eat breakfast so that I can go and get ready for the live stream. Um, and as always, I encourage you to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. Uh, I can hear my air conditioner running already. That probably means it's not a day to open your windows. But as, I'm, as I have decided to take a phrase from um, Ernest from July, open the windows of your, of your soul and allow heaven to pour in. Allow that fresh perspective to come in and do something that engages your mind and your body today. Whatever that looks like to you. It is Sunday. You are awake. You are alive. You are aware. And you are having God's day. I mean, it is Sunday. It is God's day. Uh, do something. To make it a fantastic day. And know that you are a beloved child in whom spirit is well pleased. So we will be back with you at 11 right here on Facebook Live. Reverend David will be on around 5 and I will be back with you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, beloveds.